equal opportunity for all people to succeed. Welcome to Be Less Stupid. I'm the host, John Hotchkiss, and I'm here at the Kamala Harris rally in Los Angeles, California. So I've decided to run for president of the United States. We know that she's been tough when it comes to questioning people in front of her Senate committee. General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? The question many voters have is, when will she start being specific about where she stands on some of the most important issues that affect Democratic voters? Welcome to Be Less Stupid, the show for people interested in liberal politics, science, fact, and funny. I'm the host, John Hotchkiss. So I believe this is a moment in time where leaders must speak truth. I'm going to get to the Kamala Harris rally, where she unveiled several exciting new political initiatives in just a moment. But first, if you're new to the channel, check out our exclusive reports into the Donald Trump empire. He ran promising voters that American jobs were his number one priority. To find out if that was true, I went to one of his hotels and to one of his golf courses. If Trump cares about American jobs, the words made in the USA would appear on all the furniture, the linens, the towels, the appliances, the golf clubs, and all the clothing he sells. Spoiler alert, it does not. I have left a link to those videos uh, down in the description. Okay, moving on. Kamala Harris is California's junior senator and one of the 11,000 Democrats running for president. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm being told that is not exactly correct. The number of candidates is now closer to 12,000. Prior to being California's senator, Harris was state attorney general and San Francisco's district attorney. Her campaign slogan is fearless, a marked distinction from her opponent, Bernie Sanders, whose slogan is the right amount of rumpled. Harris's prosecutor skills were on display while questioning Brett Kavanaugh and Bill Barr. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. While Harris had an exciting launch, she has since lagged far behind her Democratic opponents, losing about 40% of her initial support. And yet, I can assure you that Harris has a solid team behind her that knows how to raise money, grab headlines, captivate a crowd, and perhaps most importantly, run a modern campaign. You see, I have covered several rallies in the last two months for Bernie Sanders, Andrew Yang, Beto O'Rourke, and Kamala Harris. And of the three who haven't previously run for president, her team did the most things right. Clear signs outside pointed people where to go. Entering the facility was both orderly and well-organized. Once inside, supporters didn't have to wait long for the program to begin. Also, the program began on time. Harris's campaign clearly understands that at these rallies, they have to put on a show. Otherwise, they risk boring or turning off their most enthusiastic supporters. Also, a poorly run event indicates a very poorly run campaign. The local politicians who spoke before Harris thankfully kept their remarks brief and energetic, unlike the Stooges who spoke prior to Beto O'Rourke and Andrew Yang. We thought, okay, traffic's horrible, right? Traffic sucks. This is the greatest country in the history of the world, the richest country in the history of the world. Where I was trained for a couple of years in a specific area, in a specific niche of a job, Harris's team also booked the right size venue for the expected crowd. It was nearly full, but not claustrophobic. Unlike Beto O'Rourke's team, who expected 2,000 or so, when only 500 or so showed up. Halfway through the Harris rally, an enthusiastic young woman appeared on stage and sang about being bullied at school. There was a very brief moment of awkwardness when it was revealed that she and I were wearing the same shoes. Perhaps most importantly, the Harris team had clear signs urging people to donate, unlike her opponents. Plus, every speaker reminded the crowd of about 3,000 
to pick up their phone and make a donation right now. So join me in texting FIGHT to 70785. Get your phones out. Raising money at that moment is vital, but more importantly, the campaign also builds their list of actual supporters that they'll need to mobilize if they expect to win the election in 2020. Yang, O'Rourke, and Sanders either failed at this seminal task or simply just didn't do it. Harris not only ran a good show, she has something else that she can rely on, besides good ideas, experience, and drive. I'm referring to her ethnicity. African-American women are the most reliable voters. In the 2018 midterms, 90% of them voted for a Democrat. My affection for Bernie Sanders in 2016 was more than just that we had similar views on social issues. It's that for a brief time in the 1980s, he's the guy who sliced locks for me at the deli. This election, in order for a Democrat to succeed, the candidate will have to speak to, cater to, and address the concerns of African-American women, including making Denzel Washington secretary of DAMN. I spoke to several women at the rally. The wage difference. I feel like she's going to bring that to light. African-American women do not make the same as other women or men in the same positions. Three of their issues stood out to me as being especially significant. The wage gap that exists for women who do the same jobs as men. The gap that exists between African-American women and other women who do the same job. And education and training programs that tend to steer African-American women towards less prestigious, less meaningful, and less well-paid positions in fields like healthcare, education, and business. So, it was no surprise yesterday that when Kamala Harris unveiled several new policy proposals that they were ones that these constituents have been advocating for. Harris said, as president, she would propose a plan to close the wage gap by requiring corporations with more than 100 employees to certify that men and women doing the same work are equally paid. She proposed using federal power to raise the pay of teachers. And she proposed an executive order that would make owning a gun more difficult for some buyers. Who is all of five feet tall. Look. The California primary will be more important in 2020 than ever because instead of taking place in June, as it has previously, it's been moved up to March 3rd, Super Tuesday. We are all equal and should be treated that way. We are aspirational. We are also clear-eyed. If Kamala Harris can hang on that long, she might find renewed wind in her sail with a win in her home state. Also, she could stay at 5% in the polls through the end of the year. She could become the vice presidential nominee or drop out before the primaries even begin. Who knows? Let's speak truth. If Charlottesville didn't make it clear, if the Tree of Life Synagogue did not make it clear, if what recently happened in our backyard in Poway did not make it clear, racism, anti-Semitism, sexism, homophobia, Transphobia, Islamophobia. These issues are real in our country. That is it for this episode of Be Less Stupid. Please like the video, comment, subscribe, and share on social media. Also, thanks to those of you who have been enjoying my work. The channel has grown 25% the last month. I would like to say thank you. And please continue sharing so that others can be less stupid. Thank you for watching. I'm the host, John Hotchkiss. And I'll see you next time.